What's up, Nightwalkers? Hey, I've got a great video for you guys today. I was fortunate enough to get my hands on a Night Goggles XLS PVS-14. Now this PVS-14 comes with an Elbit thin-filmed XLSH white phosphor image tube inside of it. And this is a new offering, a, new, a whole new line being offered by Night Goggles, the XLS line. And they just released this with DBC on July 4th, 2020. You know, I don't know when you'll be watching this video, so I gotta mention 2020. Uh, so anyways, the line the line is fantastic. I think it's one of the best buys out there because uh, the pricing is just great Now just to make it clear the whole purpose of me making this video is over the last year I've received a ton of requests to do a video comparing the, these Elbit thin film white phosphor tubes against the L3 filmless white phosphor tubes You know, and I've reached out to, to several people in the past uh, over the past year to see if they'd want to send me a tube You know a T&E unit or something just to, to do the video. You know, I've got the L3 filmless covered uh, and when I mentioned I was going to be comparing it against L3 Filmless, you know, they all turned me down. Um, I can't just go out and buy devices to, to make videos on YouTube. You know, YouTube is not my primary thing. You know, I just I just make these videos because I like to make them. I think it's fun. I like putting information out there. Uh, so anyways, when I saw the line come up on the, the new XLS line on July 4th, I reached out to TVC and Night Goggles, and they were more than happy to send me one to make this video, uh, which I think is fantastic. And just to make it clear, you know, this isn't a paid promotion. It's not a sponsored video, nothing like that at all. I have no relationship with TVC to, to put this video out there. You know, I just want to do this video, put the information out for you guys, and TVC was kind enough to make it happen. Uh, so I just want to make that very clear. As you can see, uh, I have everything listed out for you, and it's going to remain the same way throughout the rest of the video, where the XLS will be on the left and the Filmless will be on the right. And the reason I say this is I'm going to take it down because I feel I feel like it clutters up the video. Um, you can see from the specs down listed below these that there's a disparity between the tubes. However, I feel this video is going to be an excellent video for people because the two different price points between the XLS and then something else that has an L3 Filmless in it, it's a pretty big price difference. And so this is going to give you a really good example of what you're going to get for those two different price points and help you make a decision if, if, uh, if spending the money for L3 Filmless is, is going to be worth it to you or if something like the Night Goggles XLS is going to do the job. Okay, this night was a no moon, starlight only night. Uh, besides the two lights that you see there, the ground lights, uh, there's a few up by the house and those are the only other light sources in this video. Okay, this is the same night as the previous shot, and the reason I'm just holding the camera still is sometimes when you pan the camera, it kind of blurs out a little bit, uh, so I thought this might help out a bit more. And then here coming up next, uh, this is a half moon night. In fact, all the rest of the shots uh, where it's brighter, it's going to be the same night, half moon. Uh, the way the shadows come in there, I think does a good example of showing the difference between them and, and how they perform. Uh, the color difference is also the same in terms of the XLS is a bit more blue than the Filmless. Okay, this was a different dark night than the previous one. Uh, same thing, no moon, starlight only, but we had a lot of clouds. Now the wife's out there with the rifle slung with the pooch, and she's going to start waving her arms so you can see her. And just to make it clear, all the footage from here and forward, the videos were done on the same nights. Here's the same spot, roughly the same distance, about 50 to 60 yards away, but half moon. And as you can tell, when the moon's out, the performance difference between both tubes isn't as great. Same spot, I just moved about 15 yards closer. I have to mention this to those who haven't used night vision before. So this is pretty typical. You know, when it's really dark out, it's not that bright. Uh, it's just not going to perform the same. Uh, but now to, the, now to your eye, it definitely looks a lot better. You know, the camera just can't capture it the same. Okay, and here I moved about another 10 yards closer. And here's the half moon night. Here, the structure does a better job of showing contrast compared to the trees in the background in the previous shots. Okay, 
Here's another good example of the difference that the moon or any additional light can make. I really like doing these types of shots uh, because of the mixed environment. You know, there's a lot of background behind her. You know, she's walking forward, coming towards the camera. You know, it's very dark. There's no moon, uh, starlight only, a lot of clouds. And I think this really gives you a good example of the performance uh, of these devices in these types of conditions. And here it is with the half moon. This is another one of my favorites because of how terrible the conditions are. It really shows you how these devices perform, uh, especially with all the, the mixed environment back there with all the vegetation and stuff. It really affects the resolution, so it gives you a good example of how these things perform when it's really dark out. And what she's doing is she's walking around the back of the tree. She's going to find a spot, and she's going to wave her arms. Same shot, but with the half moon, and due to the moon's position, it's creating a lot of shadows in there, which I think is great because it's going to make the tubes work a little bit harder than if the moon was straight up overhead, beaming down, and just lighting everything up. And here's Neowise, and then up next is the Milky Way. To wrap up this video, I'm going to go over two things. The first will be my impressions of these thin film white phosphor tubes compared to filmless. And then the second will be my thoughts about these Night Goggles XLS devices. When it comes to filmless versus thin filmed, no question, filmless is the way to go if you want every edge possible to see the best you can, no matter the conditions. Now, it does that at a much higher cost, and it's really up to you to decide if that cost is worth it to you or not. Now, the Night Goggles XLS devices, um, I really think that these things are a fantastic buy uh, at this price point. So. And the reason I say that is because previously, you know, if you wanted a white phosphor night vision device, you know, you were pretty much shopping for a Photonis Echo. And nothing against Echoes. I mean, those tubes perform very good. Uh, but at the same price range, you know, if you can get a Gen 3 white phosphor device uh, for that same price range, you know, go for the Gen 3. Uh, the Gen 3 performs better. You know, I've done videos before showing the Echo against Gen 3. Uh, the Gen 3 is brighter. I mean, it just, it's just going to work better overall in every condition compared to the Gen 2. Uh, Gen 3 is where it's at. The pricing for these night goggles XLSs is great. I mean, it's going to bring a lot more people uh, into the night vision community, uh, especially when it comes to binos. Because previously, you know, the, to, if you wanted to get into a, a set of Gen 3 white phosphor uh, binos, uh, I mean, the cost was very high. And so with these new offerings bringing the cost down, I, I think it's great. It's going to bring a lot more people into, into getting a set of binos than before. And now keep in mind, you know, it is, it is price lower for a reason. Uh, the minimum specs are lower than some other tubes, and then there is a greater spot allowance. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to get low specs or that you're going to get spots. Uh, that's just a possibility with them. It's something you need, to, you need to know about for sure, 100%. Uh, but now, a bunch of guys who bought these things from the 4th of July sale that Night Goggles and TNVC put up this year, uh, they've been posting their specs as, as they've been receiving their devices. And all the specs I've seen, they've all been pretty similar to this tube that I showed in the video or higher. Uh, and I, so I think overall, I mean, of course it's possible, you know, you can't control uh, tubes and, and how they're going to be manufactured in batches from the manufacturers. So it's possible you could get a tube that has specs lower and closer to the minimums. Uh, but it does appear that the average specs of these tubes is very good and definitely much higher than the minimums. Uh, they are auto-gated. 
Um, you know, these tubes, they uh, pretty much the same thing as the mil-spec ones. Um, it's just something knocked them out from being a mil-spec tube. So, so they're technically fallouts for that reason. Uh, that could be because of the spots. That could be because, uh, you know, one of the specs or a couple of specs are lower than the requirements that were needed uh, to get it up to that next grade. Uh, but either way, at this price point, I really think it's, uh, it's a great buy. Uh, I think you can't go wrong with the binos, especially at that price range. Uh, worst case, you know, if you don't like them, uh, night goggles, they do offer a 14 day return policy. So uh, I think it's really great. And that really says something about them standing behind it and, and believing that these tubes are pretty good. Uh, so anyways, if you're, you know, shopping and trying to decide between a lower cost uh, night goggles XLS or something, you know, with a lot more money uh, with L3 Filmless White Phosphor, I hope this video helps you out and thanks for watching.